This video demonstrates how Visual Cut can generate Excel pivot tables. In this sample report, we have several metrics highlighted in red and a bunch of dimensions such as product class, product type, employee, country, and so on. When I go to the export email tab, I see that this report is set up as Excel 97 data only because we need a tabular data set within Excel to generate the pivot table automatically. This is the name of the Excel file that gets generated when we run the process. I'll start that and while it's processing you will notice that after the export it also specifies that it generated an Excel pivot table and that's thanks to this command line argument that we see here, the XLS pivot table command line argument. So the process is done and it actually generated two files. One is the before pivot and one is the after pivot. The direct export from Visual Cut generated the before pivot and that's just the data only export of that report. It is sitting in sheet one and if I open the after pivot Excel file, I can see that indeed a pivot table was generated. This pivot table has two metrics, revenue and percent late. Revenue is a sum and percent late is the average of the ones or zeros for late or not late. The rows are countries, the columns are employees, and we can see that here. In fact, we see the top seven countries on revenue, and we see the employees descending by the total revenue. You can see that the revenue metric is formatted as dollars, and in fact, thousands of dollars. And the percent late metric is formatted as a percent with one decimal point. We also have filter, and that allows me to filter the whole pivot table by, for example, selecting just 2004, clicking OK, and now the data is all filtered to just 2004. I can change the product class to just bicycles, click OK, and now the data is just for bicycles. Pivot tables also allow me to drill down, so if I pick up any of these cells and double click, I see the detailed data behind that particular cell within the pivot table. Okay, let's remove those filters. I'm going to go back to all here. And in the employees, I can specify a value filter and pick up the top 10 option and bring that number down so that will show me the top three employees by revenue. Zoom out. And now you can see that I have just the top three employees and again, the top seven countries. I can also generate very quickly a chart from this. So if I select the pivot table and go under options, I can select pivot chart and I can accept that default, click OK, and I get a chart that uh, shows me that same information. The chart is synchronized with any options that I select within the pivot table. So if I reduce years to just 2004 again, then both the pivot table and the pivot chart got refreshed at the same time. The user can very easily change the layout of the pivot table, not just the sort and the filtering. So for example, I can go under values, grab the percent late metric, drag it out, and now the pivot table just shows revenue. Or I can pick up the day of the week, and drag it into the row labels in here. I can just do it directly to the pivot table itself, drop that option in here, and I get a pivot table that shows not just country, but also day of the week within country. And those things can be collapsed and expanded individually. But let's go back to Visual Cut and see some of the options that we specify in the command line argument to control this behavior. So here's the XLS pivot table command line argument. And I'm going to just break it down into pieces and explain them. This is also explained in the user manual. So the first piece is the Excel file that's going to be used as input for the pivot table generation. And that is the file that was generated just through the simple export from Visual Cut. The second element is the name of the Excel file that's going to be created with the pivot table. And as you can see, I start with the old Excel format and I end up with an Excel 2007 format. The next argument tells me where on the source Excel file, it's the sheet one tab, I'm going to find the data. The next argument can be skipped. It's for the name of the range and it's not currently used. Next, we have the name of the tab that's going to be created with the pivot table. Then we have the rows. And in this case, I have only one element for rows, which is country. And this specifies that the country rows are going to be sorted as top seven by revenue. 
I have the columns, which are going to be employees, and those are going to be simply descending by revenue. I have the report filters, which are year, product class, and product type. If you remember the pivot table, those are the areas at the top left corner. I have the metrics, which are the value captioned as revenue and aggregated as sum with this formatting string, which indicates dollars with no decimal points and in thousands. That's the role of the K letter here. I have the second metric is late and uh, it's going to be referred to as percent late. So it's an average of the late column, which contains zeros and ones. And the formatting is going to be one decimal point as a percent. I have control here over whether or not grand totals are shown for both rows and columns. Where do I want to show the subtotals? In this case, it's going to be at the bottom of the groups. The style of the pivot table. You can see examples of style strings or the style names within Excel. And also whether or not I want to see bands in the formatting. The, in this case, it says that I should see alternating colors for rows. And whether or not I want a spaced row between groups and whether or not I want to hide the tab that contains the raw data. You can see that I have a spaced row here between the groups. And you can also see that the original tab, the sheet one tab that has the detail is not visible here. Even though I can drill down into the detail, that's just the detail for one cell. The original detail was in sheet one and I can unhide it if I want by selecting an option to unhide. And in the unhide option, I'm just saying now unhide sheet one, click OK. And here's the raw data that was there all along. It was just hidden. Uh, there's also an option in the command line argument to hide it in a way that the user cannot unhide. So this is just an overview of some of this functionality. And it gives your users the ability to slice and dice the data without the typical restrictions of doing those kind of things through Crystal.